Greetings, this is Mr. Solomon with a new web series to support Teacher Gaming Desk. And our school was one of the first to pilot this program. I did it with fifth grade students. So episodes for this series will help teachers and students learn how to get started, how to use this application, and then we'll explore how to play some of the games that have been added. Basically, the website has three different addresses. First, you would start with app.teachergaming.com. And that lets you download the app based on your platform. So it's multi-platform, works for just about anything. Once it's downloaded and installed, you'll then see it in your dock. This is what the icon looks like over here. And then you would go to desk.teachergaming.com. So I'm still setting up an online account. So if I go to desk.teachergaming and then I create an account, I can then sign in. So I've created an account with Teacher Gaming. I sign into it. And then here is where you can see the real power of this application. So on desk.teachergaming, if I click on review, I can then review the activities that I've done with classes. So this is the real power of this app. So I can look at skill summaries, and then I can see how many points students have earned. And I can sort by skills. So if I'm only interested in seeing who has learned about history, if I click there, I can then sort by that skill. And then you can see highest to lowest. I can also check skill points. So here are students who earn more points are the ones who have played more often and have advanced through the game. If I go to class progress, switch to this view, I can then see exactly which skills students are learning. And then if I toggle on a skill, it breaks it down into even more detail. And I can close this down some more and see exactly what skills they're using. So if I want to see who's doing creative thinking, I can then see and then check which three games that they've played. If I wanted to check collaborating, for example, I can see which games involve decision making. So there's real power in seeing this. And I can also sort this by individual students. So if I just want to look at one student's scores, I can then see how they're doing. And I can click on different lessons. So I can see that Alex has spent most of his time on different activities. And I can see mostly he's doing geometry. So lots of great statistics. Going to play statistics up at the top shows me exactly how long students have been playing each game. So I can see who's it's sorting right now by longest time spent playing to least. So we had 18 hours at the top down to a new account that I've just created, which hasn't played any games yet. So you can also see if I hover how long ago since they last played some of these games. So there's some real power in the analytics of this program, which I really like because then I can really see what students are doing and how they're following the lessons. If you click up at the top right corner, you can see the classes that I've created. And then I can see the other links to the store and to Teacher Gaming Desk. If I want to create a new class, I can go to Add New Class. So let's try that. So I'll make a name for this class. I'll just call it Mr. Solomon Testing. And I will create it. It then creates a unique student ID that you can see here. So this is 54NBS. So I don't have to share it with my school right now. I'm the only user. So then if I want to add students, I click over to the right side. And I can then import a list from a spreadsheet, or I can add them individually. So I'll do J Smith 2018, just make up a generic name, add students. Say yes. Then if I open up the teacher gaming app, I can then sign in with the class ID that I've just created. So it's 54NBS. And if I'm pretending to be Jay Smith, I type my username and then log in. So once you've logged in, you'll see a list of games that are ready to play. We've purchased a couple licenses for Kerbal. A lot of these games are built in. Many of these games also are web-based, so there's no installation needed. 
some of these do require an install. So for example, if I wanted to install the game called Odyssey, I can then click the install. It'll show me the system requirements. And so you can see whether your client machines have the capability to run a lot of these games. To learn more about the games, you can go to the store. The store is up here at the top. So you can see you learn more about each of these. So if I wanted to do a lesson on fractions, I can click on the lessons. I can see how much it costs. Right now you need to be a subscriber. And then you can learn more about it. Store.teachergaming lets you purchase the licenses that go with it. You see they're using one of my quotes, which I really appreciate from the folks at Mojang. And then you can see how much it costs. So to learn about pricing, you can go back to the store and I can view the pricing structure. So it's basically based on how many students you have. So if I have up to 200 students, you'll see it's 350 a year as you toggle up to between two and 500 at 750 a year. So depending on how many students are going to be using teacher gaming, you can adjust your pricing. They also let you demo some too if you want to talk to the developers. They've been really good with helping you sample some of these items before you commit to buying. So you can see lots of lessons included with this. If I go back to my desk teacher gaming, you'll notice right now I'm in store. So if I change this to desk, And I wanted to do some lessons, for example, Odyssey, see the lesson series, and then I can preview the lessons. We'll get into how to start lessons. I just wanted to give you an idea of how to get started. So basically, you download the app, you create an account, then you start managing classes. And you can have multiple classes, as you can see. So I teach in a computer lab. I see six classes throughout the day. I could create six separate classes, each with individual student IDs. So that's pretty much how you would get started using teacher gaming. Next episode, we'll show you how to start implementing lessons. Thanks for watching.